The cry bullies of the cancel culture say that you can't speak, you can't believe what you believe, and you can't share Christ with others. Where is this going? Stay tuned. Well, Tim, I've been reading a lot about what's called the cancel culture. Folks, you know that this is a culture that's growing in the United States and even in the world. Take, for instance, Facebook, the largest social media platform in the world, almost 3 billion people. But this cancel culture is trying to get companies, force companies, to no longer get ad revenue through Facebook. A thousand companies have agreed to this boycott to force Facebook to start uh, censoring Christian and conservative content. Yes. So there is no belief in free speech or, or free press anymore. It's got to be what this cancel culture believes. And if you don't fall in their line, if you don't do their PC way of thinking, then what they'll do is they call doxing. They will release your public information out. Protests will show up at your house. Uh, we have BDS where they're boycotting Israel for the same reason. They try to destroy you economically. I think of the TV show, The Flash. There was an actor who made a tweet when he was 12 years old that seemed racist and they fired him from the show. And it was years ago when he did that. So we're seeing this cancel culture take over the world. Tim, is there a historical pattern where they're following uh, other times where this has happened? Yeah, clearly so, Nathan. Obviously, in just recent years, I say recent, uh, within the last century, we've had a number of episodes in Nazi Germany. There was an effort to eliminate books and ideas that were repulsive to the Nazis. And they had book burnings, they, uh, they persecuted people who had the wrong ideology. And of course, initially, those kind of folks who uh, were doing the persecution were the brown shirts of the Nazi party that turned into the SS. So eventually, yeah. even yeah. those people morphed into a government agency, so to speak, that really crushed freedom in Germany throughout the, uh, the Third Reich. We've seen it in other cultures as well, the Bolsheviks in Russia tried to eliminate anyone who didn't think according to their ideology. And so this has been a threat throughout history. We can even go to scripture. I find that in Acts chapter 5, when the apostles were speaking of Jesus Christ and telling that he is the Messiah, the religious leaders were threatened by that idea. And so they brought them in and ordered them not to preach in the name of Jesus Christ. And of course, to their credit, the apostles said, we must obey God rather than men. They were not going to stop speaking about Jesus Christ. And we can't stop speaking the truth today either. Amen. You'll hear people say, well, in Matthew 5, Jesus said to turn the other cheek. But when he said turn the other cheek against his enemy, he meant you don't back down, you give them the other cheek. In Luke 22, he told his disciples to buy a sword. So clearly he's not telling Christians to back down, be quiet, stop sharing their faith. He's saying even though through tumultuous times, you share your faith. I think of uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer in Germany who gave his life for standing up for the Bible in Nazi Germany. Folks, uh, we're seeing a shift in the culture towards an end. And Tim, what end do you think this culture is heading towards? I think the end is inevitably our culture is trying to eliminate Christianity. We are being pushed off of the public square. Christianity in particular and any God-oriented faith is being de deemed unacceptable by the majority culture or at least the culture drivers today. And so they're trying to silence Christians. They're trying to eliminate church uh, influence from our culture. And so that is something that we're going to see ramp up over time. And inevitably it leads to the kingdom of the Antichrist where Christians will be hunted down in mass and killed or persecuted tremendously. Oh my goodness. Folks, we're starting to see the end of the American freedom and that was prophesied in the Bible. We're getting towards this antichrist culture that cannot stand another God other than Satan. So it has to get rid of Christianity and every other religion. But we know there is hope, folks, and that's the rapture of the church, that Jesus Christ is coming for his church. Yes. When this age is over, he's going to take us up to heaven, and the world will then finally fall into place under the Antichrist regime. But that's only, what, seven years? Jesus Christ returns, he defeats the Antichrist, and sets up his millennial kingdom of peace and righteousness and justice. There'll be no cancel culture during the millennial kingdom. 
folks, that's our true home, that's our true country. So in the meantime, Tim, what advice would you have for people about living day to day in a growing cancel culture? I would say live as scripture commands. We are told to follow the commandments of, of God's word and don't give in to the pressures of the world. As a matter of fact, don't conform to the world, scripture says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have been transformed by the renewing of the Holy Spirit of God that indwells us and therefore we cannot conform to the world. And as the world tracks further and further away from God, again, into darkness, we will shine all the more as we allow Christ to live through us. So I think, Nathan, it is a time such as this that we are called to contend earnestly for the faith, again, quoting scripture over and over again, that we can proclaim truth just as the apostles did and say, we must obey God rather than men. And in the long run, we know our Lord wins. And so we are on the right side, not just of human history, but of God's history. So folks, Habakkuk 2, 4, the just shall live by faith. Live by faith, trust in the Lord. The Lord will protect you. He will reward you for standing up for what's right. Don't let the console culture shut you down.